today's sermon, and I'm going to talk about my prayers. Uh, I'm going to push this sermon, I'm going to divide this sermon into today, and tomorrow, and the next week. But you know, prayer is very important for a Christian and where we walk. But a lot of times, we pray for the wrong motives. A lot of times, we pray for things that we want and the things that we want to accomplish. Sometimes we pray to a God that we expect Him to immediately answer what we demand from a Creator. It's like a child that comes to you and says, I'm not going to eat unless you give me what I want. And in my house, you ate what was in front of you. When I grew up, you ate what was placed in front of you. Period. You used to have I remember I said, I said I couldn't stand macaroni and cheese when I was a kid. And we had macaroni and cheese in front of me. I said, I'm not going to eat that. My dad said, not my problem. Don't eat. Well, I want something else. No. What do you mean, no? No. You eat what you get, period. And that's the way it was in our house, period. But see, sometimes us as Christians, what do we want? Lord, anybody know what that is? <laughs> this is the object of many prayers. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm holding up a $20 bill. And Lord, I know it's your, it's your pleasure, Lord, that you fill my pockets with $20 bills. Lord, bless me with $20 bills. Lord, that I can pay and go on vacations and go to New York and go to Chicago and go all Lord, just bless me with $20 bills. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And I know you are a great God. You created everything. So, Lord, I expect my pockets to be filled with $20 bills today. In your name I pray. Amen. How many believe that God has power to do things? I just pray then. <laughs> Something's wrong. Where are my twenty dollar bills? Well, it says in God we trust. Am I not praying for something that's got God's name on it? Why are you answering me? Yes, he's saying no. <laughs> Why are you saying no? Let's turn to our Bibles to John. 16. We'll start on verse 23. It's on page 1661, if you got the few Bible. And in that day you will ask me nothing, but assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you until you know you have asked nothing in my name. And you will see that your joy may be full. Now that's the word of God. Lord, I just read your word, and it said, What? Ask, and you will see that your joy may be so Lord, my joy may be fulfilled. Lord, that this $20 bill will multiply in my pocket right now. Lord, so that my joy will be fulfilled. That I may be able to go buy me a brand new truck. Lord, that I may be able to go and buy me a new home. Lord, that you know what, Lord? I've been wanting to go on a vacation to Germany. I've been wanting to take my wife to Munich. And we've been wanting to go see the mountains in Germany. So, Lord, I'm praying and I'm asking you. Fill my pockets with $20 bills. What's wrong with that prayer? It's being a very what? Selfish. But let's go back a little bit to John 16, verse 4. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember what I have told you. And these things I did not say to you in the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away and send me and note of you asking me, where are you going? What is Jesus saying here? He's saying, I'm telling you a lot of these things so that you don't forget. So that you know when the situation comes. 
The Bible doesn't say that Jesus and the Bible and prayer is an automatic ATM that I can fill my pockets with $20 bills so that I can do what I want to do. That's not what the Bible's saying. The Bible's saying that I'm telling you, I've taught you, and I've taken you to a place that you would know what the will of God is. And anybody understand what the will of God is? How many of you believe that the will of God is to reach the lost of Jesus Christ? How many of you believe that it's the will of God that Jim Loft be able to take a vacation to Munich, Germany and have a great time and that, you know what, I think outreach should pay for that. <laughs> Why not? Am I not a son of God? Why wouldn't it be his will that I just have a good time? You're right. Look at verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you to all truth. He will speak on with his own authority, but whether he hears, he will speak, and he who tells you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of that that is mine. Who is he being glorified? When God answers a prayer, who is God answering a prayer for? Who needs to be glorified in the prayer? God needs to be glorified. When you go and do things for selfish reasons, is God being glorified or are you being glorified? You are. We are. And that is the problem with a lot of our prayers. We want to bring it to ourselves. Therefore, in verse 22, Know how sorrow, but I will see you again. Your heart will rejoice, and you and your joy no one will take away. Then this goes to verse 23. And in that day. So what day will he start answering our prayers? When we get our attitude lined up with God, that we start worrying about what God wants and not what we want. If it's His will, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, my will be done. On earth, just like it will be in heaven, but I want it now. Is that the Lord's prayer? Why not? And wouldn't God be glorified if I have a Rolls Royce to drive to work? Wouldn't God be glorified that the pastor could preach a 15-minute sermon and, and, and put an hour's worth of effort into it? Wouldn't God be glorified if God just answers what I want? You know, I learned many years ago that I learned to change my prayer. I ask God for things, but I ask Him, said, Lord, you know, I, I'm telling Tina the other day, I drive by Main Street every day coming to work. And I told you guys before, there was this truck that I was looking at that I thought I'd, I'd like to have. Never stopped in to look at it, but I always drove by it. Well, they sold it. Then there was another truck that I saw that I liked, it was a blue one, a C71 blue truck. And I thought, hey, man, that would be a nice truck to have. They sold it. Well, today I was driving in, I was looking for another vehicle that I could say, okay, I like that. And then it came to me. I should stop in Monday morning and tell that uh, dealer that they owe me some money because every truck that I like has gotten sold. <laughs> and it's God's will that they pay me a percentage of the money that those vehicles were sold on because I want it. How would that work? <laughs> you know, the Bible says, we have not, but we ask not. Okay? You know, I may come out here next Sunday morning and say, look at my brand new truck that the guy gave me. Yes. <laughs> we seriously talk if that happens. <laughs> but the point here is, a lot of times we get into prayer and we start what? Dictating to God what is the will. What I learned is, I said, Lord, I like certain things, but only if it's your will. You know, I would like to have this, 
but only if it's your will. I want to go to a vacation in Germany, but only if it's your will. I want to go to, I want to, go to Israel and visit the Sea of Galilee. I want to do all of these things, but only <coughs> if it's your will. Why? Because God may say, fine. I don't want you there, but you want to go? You know what? You go. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to pay the price. You know, I know why God hasn't given me two million dollars. I probably don't know how to handle it. I probably will buy those trucks that I've been looking at and not do it for the ministry that God wants. I don't know. But see, God does not give us things because He doesn't like us. God does not give us things because it's better for us. Just like with my son, when he wanted a, a, a hot rod car when he was 16. No. He got a pickup truck that had a four-cylinder engine in it, period. Mm -hmm. Lucky to have that. But what do we do? Just like the car I gave my son when he got a speeding ticket. I said, son, you can't be doing this. Well, that's not my fault. Why? It was because it's the car that you gave me. <laughs> well, don't we do that to God? <coughs> Didn't Adam say, Lord, it wasn't my fault that woman you gave me? <laughs> Didn't that, that what Adam told God? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like we still keep doing that, right? But then we start asking God for these things, and then we complain when God gives it to us. I remember many times asking for for our business. I remember we were going to open up this new place. A guy came in and says, are you sure God wants you to do that? I said, yeah, got it all planned out. I said, okay. Another guy from the church came and says, are you sure you want to open up the business over there? Yep, got it all planned out. He says, are you sure God wants you to do that? I said, yep, got it all planned out. Third person came and said the same thing. And we opened up the business, we prayed, we anointed it, we had pastors come in and pray for it, and we say, well, Lord, we're going to glorify you in this business. It was a disaster. <coughs> and we did it five and said, hey, Lord, I did everything right. I prayed, I asked, I planned. I even had pastors come in and pray for the business. What do you mean it's a failure? What do you mean it's not working? And then a friend of mine, which was a pastor, came to me and says, didn't you tell a story about three people coming telling you that maybe you should not be doing this? I said, yeah, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what was God trying to tell me? Trying to tell me not to. Trying to tell me not to. But sometimes... Sometimes it takes us losing $20 to open up our eyes. Sometimes it takes us losing $300,000 before we open up our eyes. What's the difference? What's the difference between losing $300,000 and $20? Wow. It's your level of stubbornness. <laughs> and the well, money not important. Why? It's the level of how hard hearted, how hard your heart has gotten, and how much you fall into your own understanding, and you think you've got it figured out. If you notice, even the story I was telling you about these people that are telling me, I kept telling them, I have it planned out. In other words, I know better. And God taught me a very good lesson. But what's interesting though is I learned in that prayer is to do what? Say, Lord, now, after that, I started praying differently. I started saying, Lord, if it's your will. You know, I asked God when I went to ministry, I said, Lord, I will serve wherever you call me. Wherever it is. You know, I have ministers, friends, that says, I want to be a pastor in the church. And I says, okay, I've got some friends, I know some churches that are looking for pastors. Yeah, but you know what? That's out of South Carolina, and I want to stay in Charlotte, South Carolina. I want to stay here. I said, well, then you're not doing God's will. I said, no, I think God has called me here. I said, then why you got a doctor of theology, and you're working as a maintenance guy at a hospital, 
and you're not preaching. Well, yet I have given you names of churches that are looking for a pastor that you would fit, but you don't want to move. Can you imagine if Abraham, God called him and said, what did God tell Abraham to do? Pick up and go. Well, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do, but I'm going to stay right here where the Lord is. Will Abraham be blessed then? No. No. But you see, we ask for, we want blessings for our children. Lord, bless our children. But do we even bring them to church? Do we say, you will be in church? Well, Dad, I don't really want to go. I don't really care. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Lord of God. How are we going to do what God has us? Is God really listening to our prayers? Now, I'm going to open up and pray. What I want you to do, do something a little different. And next week, we'll actually have the sermon. Today, what I want you to do is I want to be very quiet. And I want you to ask God, <coughs> what does he have for you in your life? Not what you want. But what you have, what God has for you in your life. And it's a very dangerous prayer. It's just like the Lord's Prayer. When you say, Lord, your will be done, not mine. That means God is going to put things in your life that you may not want. And if, what is basically what that is, is get out of your comfort zone. We're getting ready to start. Heaven's gate, hell's flames. We're getting ready to minister to the hundreds, if not thousands of people. We're going to need prayer warriors. We're going to need altar counselors. We're going to need people praying for those young children that are coming. We're going to need actors. We're going to need a lot of things. But you know what it's going to take? One of the biggest things that keeps God from not answering your prayers is pride. You're too prideful to eat your words and go do something that God has called you to do. We just did a mission down in Pucallpa. We planted the seed. And everyone that came back from there was touched by that ministry. But you know, it took people out of their comfort zone. It took people saying, I don't know if I can go. I don't know if I'm going to be productive. We do not know what God is using us for and where God is using us until we get to heaven. You don't know what lives you touch. Somebody gave $20, somebody gave $1,000, somebody wrote a check to pay for an airfare and went down there. But you know what? We will never know the impact that we did in the kingdom of God until we hear that last trumpet blown, until we stand in heaven and we hear the Lord saying, this is the reward that you get for being obedient. Same thing coming up with this ministry we have right here at the circus building. One pastor told me one time, and I asked him, we're sitting there at Gabriel's, and I said, what's going on in ministry here in Peru? How can we grow the church? Not First Christian, not First Assembly, not First Baptist, the church. And he looked at me, he pointed at the circus building, he says, that's the most demonic thing that we have in this building, in this city. Because people will spend more time preparing for the circus than they will coming to church. And I had just gotten here. I've been here maybe a month when I started visiting all the different pastors. And I'm going, man. And then I went to the circus. And I'm going, this is cool, man. How is this demonic? I mean, this is really cool. But then I started thinking about it. And that's when it came up for us to do eternity. Guess where? <laughs> At the circus field. And that's how we're doing Heaven's Gate. Where are we doing it at? At the circus building. 
where we're going to have a, a joint service with possibly a Methodist church, two churches of God, one church of Nazarene, assembly of God that we know of right now if we count first Christian. Can you imagine the theology gap there is in those? <laughs> and everybody's going to get together and figure out how it's going to do. But I've already said, we're doing communion. And one pastor says, what do you mean doing communion? I says, we're going to do communion. He says, why? I says, because our church, we do communion every Sunday. And he says, well, we don't do that. And I says, I know, but we're going to do it as a body of Christ in Peru on a Sunday morning at a building that a pastor told me was demonic. And we're going to have a service. We're going to play songs. We're going to raise prayers. We're going to bless the place. We're going to bless Peru. And we're going to break bread that Jesus says until he comes. And we're going to do it with our brothers and sisters of other denominations. And we're going to pray that God will have an impact on Peru starting right there in that city, in that building, in that place. And we're going to take the gospel and we're going to do it with prayer. We need prayer. But it is not our will. It's God's will. One person told me, he said, why are we doing these things? We're not seeing the results in the pews. And I'll tell you this. Some of you may be disappointed. Okay? So sit down and relax. Don't have a heart attack. These pews, this building is not heaven. Okay? Heaven is nicer than this place. Okay? Heaven is nicer than Peru, Indiana. Saturday morning, who was that? I'm going to say his name. When I talk about where's heaven, it's in Peru, Indiana. <laughs> but you see, it's going to start with prayer. And it's going to be start with prayer sincerely from the heart, not with pride, not with arrogance, not with my way, but with God's way. So I'm asking the church, and we're going to be quiet here a few minutes, to ask God, what does he have for you? And just tell me, Lord, I'm ready. And I'm ready to do what you have me do for the kingdom of God. Can we do that? Let's pray.
for what you have given us in your word and what you're revealing in our hearts right now. That we would have the courage to not let the world take us down the road of destruction. But Lord, we allow your word to take us through the road that leads us to everlasting. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. We have the music come up.